and I'd like to officially say welcome back to the Boston Tug. So this is going to be our September 2020 Boston Tug. We're going to try and do these more frequently going forward. Obviously we'll be in a virtual format for a while, but I think that has some advantages which we're going to try and leverage with getting new speakers from across the country and across the world and dive into some new and pretty pretty awesome topics. Um, so let's go ahead and go through our agenda for today. We're going to have our welcome, which we're doing right now. We're going to do a little community spotlight, and then we're going to jump into a presentation from our very own John Whitmer. Then we're going to hear from Caitlin Donovan from Boston Scientific. We'll have some announcements in our closing, uh, and feel free to ask questions in the chat, and we can answer those throughout the presentations. Let's go ahead and jump right into our community spotlight. So I'm just going to go through this very quickly so we can get to our presenters, but I would be remiss to not congratulate our very own Tableau ambassadors from Boston. Everybody can do like a virtual applause. Um, pretty awesome that we have such good representation from our region and it's really across the board. So we have Brian, David, and Michelle representing us as Tableau ambassadors for Tableau Public. We have Jackie for social media and Will for our user group. So really awesome, awesome presence out there. Um, amazing job by our ambassadors and uh, I'm sure you'll represent us well uh, for the region and um, we're really excited that you've gotten this honor. Um, we had to have me present this so that those people who are actually on the Boston Tug leadership team didn't have to congratulate themselves. So I'm happy to do that. Uh, and uh, I'm really excited that we came out so strong this year. Um, next up, we're going to highlight some of our public success stories. So I think Will is going to jump in and talk about those. And then we'll get into a little announcement. Uh, and then we'll jump right into our presenters. So Will, do you wanna take this hand off for the visit of the day news? Yeah, I'll just, we'll jump in quickly. Uh, obviously, thank you, Dustin, and to, congratulations to everybody else who was labeled ambassador. The group was, I felt like was really what was, uh, was listed as ambassador. And we, like you said, it's just crazy how, uh, how many people we have here in Boston that are really impacting the greater community and, and making ours so strong. So thank you to everybody. Um, we're really happy to show a couple of visits of the days. Uh, be sure if you don't know where that link is, we can throw it in the chat. In the chat. If you're on Twitter, if you're on LinkedIn and you see something cool or you're just going through Tableau Public, nominate it for a visit of the day. It's really a cool honor uh, for anybody who's received it. Uh, we're really happy that one of our speakers today was one of those who received it. It's this great um, flower petal chart by John Whitmer. Um, I'm glad he did last year's stats and not this year's stats because the Red Sox are pretty terrible. And uh, a project championed by our own tug leader, uh, Kate Brown, uh, the Black Heritage Trail. So uh, we put that viz contest out a little while ago. Um, the data is still available for anyone who wants to participate or check it out, but Brian Moore put a great uh, like storytelling viz, a trip through each one of the spots, and was, was given to visit the day, which was really exciting. So uh, please follow us on Twitter, at Boston Tug. Uh, we're always posting stuff there and on LinkedIn. Tag Wig a visitor whenever you can. And again, just we're so proud uh, of the representation of the community of Boston, specifically in the greater community. And um, I miss seeing everybody in person. I think that's it. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Will. All right. So I think next up, uh, we're running a little. I mute myself now, so we have no more roosters. Will's going to mute his farm noises from his actual real life farm that I got eggs delivered uh, personally to me. I actually had quail eggs yesterday for the first time. So thanks, Will, for that. Um, next up, if John is ready, uh, we can jump into John's presentation. Uh, John, are you good to go? All right. Good to go. We can see you. We can hear you. I'm going to stop sharing so you can share. Perfect.
Okay. Can you guys see this? This being the splash yep. page. Okay, very good. Hi, hey, everybody. Um, happy to be here. My name is John Whitmer. Um, just a quick intro. I am the Senior Business Analyst and Principal Data Visualization Designer at Teradyne here in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, at Teradyne, I also run um, a monthly tug internal to the company. Um, so, you know, we go over the newest techniques. We do like a monthly um, challenge where I'll put together, you know, a viz challenge or a data prep challenge, throw it out to the group. Um, they get scored. Um, at the end of the year, we've got prizes. So we learn a lot. We have a lot of fun. And also outside of Teradyne, um, I have been lucky enough to be a guest lecturer at Georgetown University around Tableau doing um, time series analysis. All right, enough about me. Let me jump into the presentation. All right, so what I'm going to go over today, as Will mentioned, is a viz that I came out with maybe a month ago called Playball. So I'm a, a big baseball fan. Um, Tampa, born and raised, so go Rays. Sorry, guys, Rays are first. Um, but so I've always been a big baseball stats guy. And so I'll talk a minute about the inspiration, but um, I had been playing with this pedal type chart and in tweaking it, I sort of found a, a couple of changes that you can make to it that kind of change the shape a little bit. And when I saw this, the first thing I thought about was baseball bats, right? So if you can imagine them all sitting in like a barrel looking down on top of it, you can see kind of the knobs of the bat. So a lot of times, you know, the, the story leads the viz creation, but for me, this was 100% a chart type that led to this visualization. Um, it's also the first time I've done anything long form. I'm usually very anti long form, and this is 4,500 pixels long, and of course, my first viz of the day. So maybe I need to change my way of thinking. Uh, but what this does, I took every baseball team and I took their stats from 2019. And I will show you the data prep steps in a minute. But what this does, it shows every team's performance against all of the other teams. And it shows how they performed as far as a ranking of their statistics against the other teams in Major League Baseball. So, um, for example, the Angels, not a very successful year. You can see by their record. Um, but the length of these bats is how well they ranked against other teams. So the shorter, not so good. The longer, um, that's what you want to see. So the Astros clearly were a successful team last year, and they just dominated in almost every category. All right, so I did that once and then duplicated it 30 times, basically. So it's kind of fun to see where teams were successful or not. And uh, maybe a next step for me, I'd love to get all – um, years history that I can and do sort of a regression analysis to see which statistics actually um, led to or predetermined a successful season for the teams. Okay, so some inspiration notes. Um, I would say number one for doing a chart like this was from last year's Tableau conference. Um, I took some great advice and I was still kind of new to Tableau at the time, and I wanted to go to all of these that show the in-depth, um, detailed, you know, key level stroke work. Um, but the, the suggestion from a friend was to go to the most inspiring sounding um, talks. And this was definitely one, the Tableau Twins Take You Beyond Show Me talk. Uh, I, knew a Ke I knew Kevin a little bit uh, from Twitter, and this just sounded like a great talk, and I could not have made a better decision. Uh, just some proof. You know, they took a selfie, and yes, that's me sitting in the crowd. And so just a, a point of reference for those who do eventually get to travel to a Tableau conference, when you have the Iron Viz winner from the day before sitting right in front of you, you are at the right session. And so this was highly inspiring. I mean, I'm at the airport the next day practicing trigonometry. Uh, so great talk. Um, since then, um, not long ago, maybe two months ago, I saw a post from Tableau Magic where Tone had done this um, pedal chart. And so I went through that 
um, tutorial. It's a great tutorial and I've got the link up here. We can put it in the description later also. But so I will show you guys how to do this, but I highly recommend going to the tutorial that he has online and building it yourself from scratch because something will always go wrong if you use a template. You'll change a name of a field and the whole thing breaks. So going through it yourself the first time, very valuable, all right? So the data involved in the viz, basically what I did, I went to um, baseballreference.com and I got all of the 2019 stats. That's a, if you like baseball, it's a great statistical place they have everything you can imagine. So the first thing I did, I got the raw numbers, right? So this is only a small piece of it, but it's basically um, in tabular format. It's, you know, every team and then all of the statistics. So I, you know, cherry picked 10 hitting stats and 10 pitching stats. We could argue all day what the most important of those 20 are, but these are the ones that I chose. So step one is just downloading the data. The second thing I had to do, and this is all done in Excel, the second thing I had to do was rank the teams in each category. All right, so that's a, a simple rank formula in Excel. And so what it will do, it will return, um, if, you, if you set it up uh, to give like in a descending order where the highest number in that column is the best, then it will give a rank of one. So last year, not this year, as Will said, but last year, the Red Sox were a good hitting team. So you can see they ranked first in hitting and in, in singles, basically, and in doubles. All right. So to then turn that into a chart, I still needed the ranks for like the Vision tooltip. But to turn it into a chart, a one is not what I want. I want the opposite, right? Because the longer the pedal, or in this case, the bat, the better. So that was simply taking whatever that ranking was and subtracting that from the number 31. So there are 30 teams, right? And so if you want to have the longest pedal or bet because you had the highest ranking, and you were ranked number one, you need to subtract that from 31 so that your length is 30. Right? So that is what I did down here in step three. And you can see kind of the inverse of these two ones. The Red Sox now have a 30 in the hits and the doubles category. So in their piece of the viz, that would give them the longest bat in those two pieces. I also did an additional column that I made up here at the end called dummy. And for this, I gave every team a rank of 30. And in a minute, I'll show you why I did that. Okay, so let's jump into a demo of this. Let me get out of full screen. All right, so we're in Tableau. And first, let me go to the data source. So I have already connected to that Excel spreadsheet. And so here is all of the data and their, their ranking reversed. So what we want, we don't want this in the classic Tableau, I'm sorry, the classic Excel format. We need to pivot this data because we will do, be doing the chart based on a single dimension that contains all of these different categories. So this is very easy to do in Tableau. Um, I'm, so the, the one column we want to leave alone is this one that names the teams. The rest are all our statistical measures, so we're going to pivot those. So I'm just going to select runs, go all the way down here at the end, select the last one, dummy. So then I'll right click this and say pivot. All right, so now this has done exactly what we need. It has now taken each team and made a new row for every category and given that value. Now with this type of chart, you need to basically duplicate the data. And you could do this in Excel. You could simply copy everything and paste it again in the bottom and then give it what's called a path, um, a path field. But I choose to do this in Tableau uh, because a lot of times, so not in this case, but sometimes you don't own the source material and you can't exactly ask the person to take all the data and duplicate it, right? Or it gets updated frequently and that duplication gets stale. All right, so what you can do is you can take that data from Excel and do a self-union. So 
Here is the sheet that that data came from. It's this rank points um, tab, uh, tab from Excel. So I'll just take this and drag it up here until I see this orange box that says union. And I'll drop that there. And so it has, Tableau is smart enough to say, this is the same data that you had before and you pivoted it the first time. So when you do this self union, I'm gonna go ahead and pivot that data and dump it right on top. All right, so you can see here by this table name, this is the original name of the table. And if I scroll down past the halfway point, it has renamed that second set, the same thing, but it puts a one on the end. That one is important for the calculations we're going to be doing in a second. But this is basically all of the data prep that needs to be done for this viz. All right, so I'm going to jump back into my worksheet. All right, so let's see. The first thing I'm going to do is we want to do this. We're not going to do this 30 times, but I had to do this 30 times. So that means I had to filter by the team. So just so that this data makes sense when we make it, I'm gonna drop team onto filters and let's just pick the A's. All right, so the data is now filtered just for the Oakland A's. All right, so this is going to be a line chart. And so let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now we need to add the formulas. And so as I mentioned, the, the three people, Ken, Kevin, Flairledge, Tone, uh, these are guys who understand trigonometry well, and they are much smarter than me when it comes to those types of charts. Uh, so if you have questions about how some of these trigonometry pieces work, uh, I am not the person to ask. But I, like many people in the community, lean heavily on these guys for their knowledge in that space. So what I'm really going to do is I'm going to uh, copy and paste these into my, my workbook here. And um, we'll, we'll watch it work, but I can't exactly give you the details on the why. So when I want to recreate something like this, um, after I've built it once and I've got it working the way I want and I know that it's functional, I will save those formulas so that I can use them later. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open another data source. So let me go to new data source. And in my saved data sources, I have this one called calcs. So this started as a completely blank data source. Well, you actually need, you need a column and you need a single row or else it knows it's not a legit source. So I created that. And then within that dummy data source, I have created custom calculations. So if I go to edit this one called radial pedal calcs, this is a list of all of the calculations that I need to create this chart. So what I'm going to do to import them into what we're doing today, let me reselect demo. This is the data that we're going to be using. So from here, I can just do the Lindsay Poulter method of copying things over. So if you didn't watch IronViz 2019, I suggest you do that, but this is one of her tricks. So I'll just highlight this, drag it over and drop it on. And I'm going to do this for each one. So um, the path, this is what we talked about where um, it duplicates the data. And so what this first, this path calculation is doing basically is it's an if statement and it's looking at that table name. Remember where it put a one on the end? So we want two sets of paths. So the first set of data, we want it to all equal zero. The second set, it's going to equal one. And these are going to be the lines that we're drawing between the zero, which is in the middle of the viz, and then the one, which is at the end of each one of those measures. All right, we also need this degrees calculation. Drag that guy over. We're gonna need an index. Need a calculation to determine the size of the lines. And then we need our X and our Y because remember everything is a scatter plot. So this is the sine and cosine um, trigonometry pieces uh, that smarter people than me discovered how to do in Tableau. All right, so that's it. The difficult custom calculations are now all brought into here. All right, so for path, we actually need to turn this into bins. So if you right click path, go down to create, bins. All right, and we want to change the size of the bins to one. 
Great. So now let's go ahead and drag path down here into details. And we're gonna need the pivot field names. And we're going to need the index also. So we'll just bring all of those down here. Okay, so for the index, we need to change, this is a table calculation, we need to change how it's being computed. So we're gonna go down to compute using, and we're going to choose path bin. Great. All right, so now let's bring the X and the Y onto the chart. X is going to go into columns. Y is going to go onto rows. And now we have to do a little bit of tweaking to these. We're going to do the same thing to both. So you can click on the, the, the drop down button or right click on X. And we're going to say compute using pivot field names. And then we also need to go in and edit the table calculation. Make sure this is a nested calculation based on index. And we're going to change the specific field to path bin. Okay, we're getting there. Now let's do the same to Y. Compute using pivot field names. Getting there, edit table calculation, nested on index using path bin. Very good. All right, now this path bin that we brought down into marks, this needs to be what determines the path. And there we go. We now have basically a radial bar chart. It's a line, but it's like a radial bar chart. Okay, so what we wanna do now to change it to the pedal style, the additional piece, and this is why we have the index down here, if we then do the size of these lines based on this index, so this is, remember, it's going from zero to one. So zero is in the middle, that's going to be skinny. One is at the end, that's going to be the fattest part. So it's really just changing the size of that highest number. So if we change this guy to size, now we're getting something that looks more like the bats. And so, let's see, we also need some color to this. So pivot field names, we can change this to color. Now this is all of our dimensions that we are doing this chart based off of. Um, but one thing I wanted was I wanted all of the batting stats on the left side and all of the pitching stats on the right side. So just a second of cleanup here, I'm going to rearrange these. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna drag this dummy calculation down to the bottom. So we're about to see why I have this in here at all. One is to equally separate the batting on the left and the pitching on the right. Otherwise it puts whatever this last one is in the names right in the middle. So I didn't want that. The other reason I have this in here and the reason I set it to 30 is because when you duplicate this across all the teams, if you don't have that dummy field, this chart type will maximize the space of the visualization. So even if you had a team that their best score was a three, it would fill the chart so that that three is the longest bar all the way out to the end. And we don't want that. We're trying to compare against all of the other teams. All right, so this 30 is sort of like a level set across all of the copies for the different teams so that a team with a small set of rankings will have small bars comparatively. And so back to rearranging this, and I'm not going to put them in any great order. I'm just doing this kind of quickly. Let's see, RBI, runs scored, uh, stolen bases. Let's see, uh, I need to remember here, strikeouts is a hitting stat, Ks is a pitching stat in this case, whoops. Triples and walks. Okay, so I think that's it. And what I accidentally did a second ago, let me just double click on this to bring up the, the color palette. So we've got the first one selected, the last of the hitting ones is down here. 
I'm just hitting shift and then the last one to select them all, make that blue. The pitching stats, I'm gonna do the same, the first of the pitching all the way down to the one before dummy, select red. And dummy, I'm going to double click, pick screen color and just pick the background. I could have selected white, but the viz actually had a, a different shade of white to it. So picking screen color is going to get you the most accurate result. So now that I say, okay, we should see the right size and coloring. The last piece to make it a little bit of the bat style. So here are the tweaks that I did. Let me just bump up the size a little bit. Great. So let me go into color and we'll knock this down to maybe 80. And the piece that gave it that baseball knob is this marker effect. So if I select the middle one, now we have the bats. Okay. And that was quite quick, but that is a brief walkthrough on the uh, radial bat template. Now, speaking of templates, something I've done for you guys, because like I said, I walked through that very quickly, but we have you know, more presenters after me. So I wanna make sure you guys can, can play around with this too and, and learn from it the way I did. So um, after, this, uh, after this event, feel free to go to Tableau Public. You can find my profile and I have uploaded this radial pedal chart template for you guys to download. And if you, um, you, know, if you get in there, it's already got the calculations pre-done. All you would need to do is download this, uh, this dashboard and just copy. I've got the instructions right here, right? I've got the work instructions. But you're just gonna copy the data, um, create your own Excel file, and then just remap that data source to the file on your desktop change the data however you want, and you should have a perfectly functioning pedal chart. Awesome okay. job, John. Yeah. That's it. Thank you guys for your time. All right. Awesome job, John. Uh, if everyone could go to John's uh, public and add him as a follow and favorite his visits, that'd be awesome. Uh, maybe we can get him up there. As have you been featured author yet, John? We got to get you there. Not yet. Working on. All right, it. that's our goal, guys. Get John to be a featured author. So we'll that's get him cool. up there. Um, amazing job. Definitely go check out that template. Uh, any questions or anything like that? Be sure to add them in the Q and A. We can always circle back to them after um, and get those answered before the end of the meeting. But amazing job great tutorial and, uh, and great stuff that we can go download that after. Thanks, um, Justin. Yeah. Uh, so up next, I believe we have Caitlin Donovan, uh, who's going to be talking through uh, some of the projects over at Boston Scientific. Caitlin, are you all set? Yes, thank you, Dustin. Can you see my screen? Yep, I can see your screen and we great. can all hear you too, so. Great. Well, thanks so much, Dustin. It's great to be here today and share our story virtually. Uh, my name is Caitlin Donovan. I'm the Director of Enterprise Analytics at Boston Scientific, leading our analytics center of excellence within the IT organization and expanding our capabilities into enterprise and advanced analytics. And today I will share the business problem that we faced during the initial COVID days back in March and into Q2 and how Tableau accelerated our analytics efforts to quickly understand the impact of COVID on our business and then helped us to navigate our recovery. So to introduce folks to the Tableau landscape at Boston Scientific, since I last presented at a user group meeting about a year ago, we have continued to grow and expand into new areas. And we are now over 20,000 users across the organization using our Tableau server environment. And we've introduced Tableau to several new user groups, such as regulatory and HR. And earlier this year, a need for enterprise-wide cross-functional analytics were identified through COVID. So as COVID was quickly escalating in the US, we needed to understand the impact on our US business and align on how we would tackle this. We needed to start with tracking specific hotspot outbreaks in the US and provide an analysis on daily and weekly trends and ultimately develop a solution that would provide a comparative loss of business and impact projection for our executive committee. 
we established a core team and took a product approach to this challenge. We knew that we would need a dedicated team to support us with the data, the tools, as well as divisional expertise. Um, we, start, we started to align on the tools that we would use and also started to get up to speed on the external data that was becoming available. We aligned with the core team on working in an agile fashion with daily, sometimes hourly, sometimes half hourly stand-ups and used virtual tools for rapid collaboration. We knew that we would need constant user feedback in order to move quickly. We then put together what we would call a data baseline and brought all of the divisions together to align on the commercial metrics that would be used. For those of you who work in the commercial space or if your organization has many different types of divisions or lines of business, you know the complexity in various business processes and the types of challenges that creates when trying to do truly cross-divisional cross or cross-functional analytics. Uh, immediately, however, we knew we had the technology in place with our Tableau environment and supporting databases and tools like Alteryx that we would use and we would know we knew would help us to tackle this type of challenge that we truly had, had never faced. So as I mentioned, we took an agile approach to this effort and to solve this problem. Um, iterating on our MVP Tableau dashboard allowed us to provide value to the business very rapidly. And within a matter of hours, we had established that data baseline that I mentioned. We had um, within three hours, we had the data ready to go to begin our front end design work. In three days, we had a working MVP for a few of the US markets and we were measuring the month to date sales impact, the projected impact for the remainder of the month, the percentage up or down compared to last year and provided into a view into the COVID cases by state. Within two weeks, we had expanded our scope and included new detailed metrics with state level analysis. And within three weeks, we had a fully operational solution for the executive committee, which included procedure level trends for elective and non-elective procedures, which is critical for our industry. And we also had introduced brand new data interfaces that we had never incorporated into our commercial reporting. Uh, for example, implant trends that were coming from salesforce.com. By the end of the second quarter, we had an automated solution, a defined delivery mechanism, and a fully opera operational analytics um, solution that our leadership was using on a daily basis to make data-driven decisions. Um, an effort of this to get scale would typically take us six to nine months. And the speed that we moved at with this effort was truly enabled by our, our very solid foundation of enterprise tools and data from our, our sales reporting environment and Tableau. We had constant user feedback and a dedicated team who was focused on the delivery of this product. Um, but we weren't done here. So as we continued to automate the elements of the impact analytics and we expanded this to other regions outside of the US, we started to shift our focus to su support our recovery. So we had a handle on the impact on our business. We knew where we were, but where do we go next? So as new needs and new questions and use cases started to emerge, our COVID analytics work stream quickly evolved from reporting on what happened yesterday because of COVID to predicting where the US would recover the fastest. So at the time, for example, our sales leadership could ensure that sales reps were redeployed to the field safely, um, among many other business decisions that needed to be made. So the data source that was created to support these needs was developed by a cross-functional team at BSC. We used external and public data sets that were available and we internally developed algorithms in partnership with our data science and engineering team to start to predict the change in cases for COVID by state on a weekly basis. We then used Tableau to build a state level scorecard, which you'll see in the screenshot, to visualize these new metrics such as social distancing scores and hospital capacities. We then incorporated the predictive model that we built internally into our dashboard. And this was really the first example of an advanced algorithm being used in an enterprise level Tableau solution. So this tool ultimately provided a single source of key state level data uh, with the most critical aspects for each state's recovery so that we could start to forecast the weeks and months ahead. We also provided an ad hoc data source on Tableau server for enterprise wide consumption um, with the theme really of providing the best available data to our organization. And both the impact and recovery based um, tools that were built on Tableau have become a staple for our leadership in commercial decision making. 
So a few closing thoughts and takeaways from this experience, um, leveraging the foundational investments that we've made in Tableau and Alteryx and our databases truly enabled and accelerated us on this effort. Without these tools, we would not be where we are in this recovery journey. Second, an agile approach works with Tableau and Alteryx. And our team from an IT standpoint was really able to demonstrate to our business partners that we could iterate quickly and adapt by using these technologies. The concept of an MVP and delivering value just really clicked for them throughout this process. And third being momentum. We have learned so much in the past six months working in this pandemic environment um, that we will apply to future analytics efforts from the team structure and how to really think about this as a product of what we're building to the metrics that are most important um, and just in continuing to evolve what we deliver with Tableau and push the boundaries on um, our innovation. I think we, we've pushed so many boundaries during this time um, from an organization and from an analytics standpoint and Tableau accelerated us even further onto um, our analytics journey and our strategy around data-driven data decision-making um, has really been incredible the past six months. Um, so I have, we have plenty of time for, for q and I wanted to share our, our story and experience today. And I, I do have Dustin um, on the call uh, here today, who is part of our, our COVID response team at BSC, who can also help answer um, questions about our solution. So with that, um, Dustin, I guess we can open it up for, for some questions. Awesome. Uh, yeah, if anyone has a question, please submit it through the Q&A box. If you go down to the bottom of your Zoom, there should be a little section called Q&A. You can submit them in there. Uh, we are monitoring the chat too, but it's just easier to answer them in the Q&A section if you have any. I have a quick question. All hey, right, well. Hi, KD. How you doing? I will. Good, thanks. So I, I really appreciated your and great presentation. I really appreciated your point on uh, momentum and kind of carrying learning forward from uh, an IT boss standpoint, what do you, how much of the credit do you give to uh, motivation of everybody dealing with this same problem? And are there some learnings from that inspiration and motivation that you can carry forward in terms of, you know, projects? We have, there's things we're dealing with in COVID now, and that's obviously a serious project and everybody hears it but then everybody's going to have to go back to sort of their own branding and big projects and things like that. So is there something you learned from the scale and how quickly you could get people move with this scenario that you could play forward without that stick of COVID behind it? I, th I think so. And I think what, what really worked and what we learned was having that dedicated team on this product. So whether that's for, for COVID or you think about other solutions that we will develop, I think having that the ownership and um, really understanding the business value of what the solution is delivering um, was one of the biggest takeaways for us that I think is very transferable to really any of the solutions that we're building. So just having that dedicated team with a focus and understanding the the value that it brings to the business um, will is something that we will continue to apply to all of our efforts. Awesome. Um, so we did get, we got three more questions coming uh, right now. So the first one was uh, great presentation. Were the predictions done in Tableau or somewhere outside of Tableau? So the predictions were built um, kind of as part of our internal algorithm that I mentioned. So um, using a combination um, of R to build that out and then it being stored in an AWS environment. And then we use Tableau to visualize that. Um, so it was more um, kind of built in another environment and Tableau is connecting into that to include that in our dashboard. Cool, yep. Um, so we have two questions that are very similar uh, and the basic topic is, uh, are you using Agile for analytics projects or was this strictly used for analytic solution design? 
So we, we have quite a hybrid model um, at BSC of kind of methodologies and where Agile is used. Um, it's not used everywhere for every project. It kind of depends on the use case. Um, what we did learn through this effort, however, is that Agile works for analytics development, for design, for um, all, all of the concepts that, that we talk a lot about. We, we put them you know, into practice through this. And I think it really demonstrated to our business partners that we have the right tools and we have you know, teams that can really understand how to create an MVP and take a lean approach and deliver value in small pieces. Um, so I think that this effort and experience that we went through um, is only just kind of really expanding our agile capabilities in the analytics area. Awesome. Um, so two more just came in and they're both related to data. Um, so one was how were you able to deliver in such a short timeline? Were your data sources solid and required little prep? Did you have a large team? And the other one, which is basically a, a similar line of thought, is what was the biggest data-related challenge with the source data? So. Sure. Um, so, so I'll start with um, so the quality of data. So, fortunately, so we we've had we have these foundational investments that we've made in our in our tools and in our data um, as well. So, our sales data we do have a centralized commercial data warehouse that um, it was a pretty big pretty big moment to have um, that you know, really be exposed to having all of our data across the organization from a global standpoint. Um, so that helped us quite a bit. W one of the challenges for us was aligning every division in the US on the metrics that would be displayed on this dashboard. So while we had the data for everyone, of course, we ran into you know, specific divisional challenges and nuances with that structured data that we have. Um, so that, that was one of our challenges. Um, and then starting to integrate these new types of sources um, into our environment at first was a bit of a challenge, just aligning you know, the, the state abbreviations, for example, for COVID, you know, how, we, how we name states and the abbreviations that are used. Um, so aligning that at the beginning took took a bit of work, um, but our, our core data kind of behind the scenes um, was well structured um, for us to really get going on, on this very quickly. And that having that in place and Tableau were really the, the key ways we moved so quickly because we didn't have to think about really which tool we were going to use or, or which data set that, that was already there. Um, so we we're fortunate with that. Um, we had a pretty small team actually that was truly focused on this day to day. Um, so we had a product owner from our, our business team, a product manager, um, our designer, um, Dustin, we had another data engineer um, that was really a core team focused on this. And that was that was about the right balance for what we needed um, as we were working through this, you know, so much throughout that initial time frame. And then of course we had an extended team that helped us with other data integrations, d different divisional expertise that we relied on interfacing systems. Um, so it was you know, a pretty small team and that actually um, worked well for an initiative like this. And it's a model that we would even use for other solutions. Um, it was really kind of that, the right balance of, of engineering and um, design and then product management overall. Awesome. No, that's great. Um, I'm going to try and combine a couple of these and I'm just going to answer one of them live because it's just straight up about the dashboard. Uh, one said, how long does it usually take to build these Tableau dashboards um, from data building to visualization? I think for this particular dashboard or set of dashboards that we created, once we had all of the data, uh, the actual development only took about a day to do the initial kind of mock-up, but we did probably iterate through this dashboard like 15 or 20 times before we ended up with something that was very consistent uh, and we could execute on on a regular basis. Um, the other, there's a couple that are sort of related. Uh, and one of them is just, you know, was executive level bought into this uh, data before or did this COVID project show opportunity and breadth for use cases for this data? And along similar lines, uh, we have a question about how did you know, different parts of the organization access this dashboard. Was it open to everyone or not? So just execs or execs and down? Um, so on the first question, I think this 
definitely opened up a lot of um, opportunities and gave us a lot of really great visibility at a very senior leadership level around our capabilities with data and and with um, Tableau and just analytics in general um, and the need for digital solutions. Um, so that it definitely opened up a lot of um, opportunity there. And I think just having having a tool that was easy for them to use and to make decisions on um, early early on um, kind of demonstrated what we could do as far as delivering this type of capability. Um, as far as accessing the data and this dashboard, so given the sensitivity of the financial data, this was pretty limited at first to you know an executive um, level audience and then to our, our sales operations leadership. Um, however, when we built the recovery dashboard, we did make that accessible to the enterprise. Um, so that was able to be accessed by our, our Tableau server environment. Um, it's all external, uh, publicly available data sources. So we were able to, to make that available more broadly. Um, and that was one of our goals to throughout this and we're, we're still working on it but providing that best available data to the enterprise um, everyone quickly started to build their own forecast models and start to do their own recovery and we're still seeing some of that pop up and we're trying to make sure that everyone has standard um, data available to them for these these tools where where possible um, so that's something that we continue to work through awesome all right uh so, Caitlin, are you okay to answer a couple more questions? Sure, if we have okay. time. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> we've got it. They just keep coming in. They love you. Um, all right, so uh, we got one. Uh, who is this guy? Danny Sedani. All right. Uh, so <laughs> he says, very cool. Will the predictive algorithms and dashboards be tweaked for continued use after COVID? Um, um, yeah. 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 Let's can start with that. Yeah. Yes. I think we even. Um, <laughs> I mentioned. You know, these have really become a staple in date in daily and weekly um, reporting and analytics needs. So even the model has even evolved over time. Um, the you know the team we're working with to build is kind of constantly validating it, retraining the model. Um, and I think it, it will easily be kind of transferred into other areas or other, you know, around our, our forecasting um, and other kind of predictive needs. So um, that, that will definitely be. And I think the impact analytics that we built um, is, you know, is definitely a long-term type of solution to provide insight into um, kind of just our overall um, cross-divisional sales analysis for our executive leadership. Awesome. Um, I'm going to knock two of these off just so we can get them off the board. Um, it says, uh, great presentation. Thank you. Do you track how often your stakeholders use your dashboards? Did you experience any challenges of getting stakeholders to use the dashboards and get data insights from it? So yes, we track everybody who uses all of the dashboards. Um, and no, we didn't have any trouble with them using it. It was almost the opposite. Um, so, you know, these dashboards were so like, highly used and looked at within the organization that we had to make sure they were essentially perfect every day updated they were pushed via subscription they were pdf'd and sent they were you know distributed um, as soon as we could get them out every day and they still are so there's there's definitely very high demand for them um, and then there was another question about uh, do you know of any Tableau dashboard studies on the impacts of mask use? Uh, not Tableau dashboards, but I know there's been some studies out, so I'm sure somebody will pick that up and run with it uh, for Tableau Public. Um, and then I think we've got two tiny ones left and then we're done. Uh, so what's the makeup of your analytics team in general, not just this one? I, what roles are there? Are there BI? BI slash BA type people? Are there people who do development and ETL and technical roles? Uh, that sort of thing. And I know, Caitlin, you have a really big team uh, overall, but I don't know if you just want to talk through that like sure. for one minute yeah, so, high level. But. Yeah, so um, overall, you know, the whole COE right now is a team of about 40 and we, we have a whole range. So from business analysts to um, system administrator roles, architect roles, data analysts, data engineers, um, you know, 
we we have pretty much the the whole range there, um, and and it's structured around different functional areas. So you know, supporting our, our sales reporting and commercial, a team that supports our our platforms around Tableau, um, and then our, our studio team that's focused on um, Tableau development. So um, that is starting to evolve as we get into some of these you know newer advanced analytics areas that we haven't um, gotten into previously. So um, it's evolving, but we have you know really the whole range there. Awesome. And last one, uh, and then you're free to go. Uh, so how does this experience influence your analytic priorities for the rest of 2020 and into 2021? So I think we, we quickly learned um, what was important from an analytics standpoint um, and just some of, some of the foundational areas that we've invested in of just continuing to innovate with our solutions through our, our studio offerings um, and really accelerating that, um, ensuring that our, our systems are on you know, stable and fast working platforms. Um, we're transitioning some of our, of our systems to cloud-based solutions. So that's another area that, that's been accelerated as a result of this. Um, and then more, more exposure across the enterprise for truly cross-functional analytics um, is another area that, that we're accelerating um, as a result of this experience. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Caitlin. This is awesome. Uh, I'm sure everyone has even more questions to ask. If you have any, feel free to email uh, me or anyone else on the team and we can follow up with any of the presenters today. I know that Jackie is going to uh, wrap us up and, and talk about next. Um, but again, thank you everyone. Uh, Jackie, you can take it away. Thanks all. All right. Thanks. All right. Thank you uh, to John and Caitlin for your presentations. That was awesome information. I just wanted to, before we close out, announce a couple of upcoming Tableau events. So I'm sure everybody has gotten the email um, and seen activity on Twitter and all that. The Tableau Conference-ish 2020 is coming up in the beginning of October. So definitely um, register for that and check it out. It's gonna be free and virtual so everybody can, can participate this year. So join that. I'm really interested to see what their take is on it this year. Um, and then we have our next Boston Tableau user group booked for October 22nd. Uh, so you'll be getting the invitation for that coming up soon. Um, and this will be featuring, we've got Roshni from MIT. We have uh, Zen Master and Ambassador Carl Alchin coming on to talk about Tableau prep and Zach Bowders to talk about uh, thinking differently. And so that will be a great event. And, um, and then Chart Champ is a, an annual event uh, hosted by Clear Intelligence that will be coming up also in the end of October. And Dustin had a couple of things he wanted to add about that. Sure. Um, yeah, so last year we had it at Harpoon Brewery. Um, this year, it will obviously be virtual. The theme is going to be Halloween slash horror. So our data set is going to be 9,000 horror movies and associated data. Um, we're going to provide that probably the end of next week. Uh, we're trying to pick a day or a couple days that we'll be hosting uh, the event the end of October. Um, the prizes are going to be significant. So it's going to be some really, really, really big gift cards uh, for the winners. So we're hoping we get a lot of participation, especially locally. We are going to open it up uh, a little more broadly because we are doing a digital event this year, but really look forward to everyone competing. Um, and we'll have more news about that next week. All right. Sounds awesome. And then I just wanted to, before we sign off, let everybody know you'll start, you'll be in the October invite as well. Um, you'll see these links to share your achievements. Um, so that'll be a form that you can fill out if you get a visit of the day, you get certified, you want us to recognize you in the tug for anything, um, and we'll, we'll give you a shout out at the next tug after you put it in the form. Um, and then we also are putting out call for speakers. So there's a link to the speaker application form. We've, we've got uh, some really great speakers coming up for October and November, but get your names in and uh, if you have anything that you think you'd like to share, you don't have to be polished. We're looking for anything from 15 minute talks to uh, you know, full 30, 45 minute um, feature spots. Uh, so 
get your submissions in. We'll reach out. We'll talk about what you have to present. And uh, we look forward to seeing what everybody brings forward. All right. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks, everybody. Thank you to all our speakers. Um, congratulations to all our brand new shiny ambassadors. And uh, thank you to everyone else in the Boston Tug uh, for attending today. And uh, we'll see you in October. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you.